Today I'm looking at this little module and uh, you can see here from the silk screen it's an RS4852 Wi-Fi adapter designed by Colin Hickey and this is available on his Tindy store. It's a fairly straightforward little board to be honest from a hardware perspective there's an rj45 connector there to connect it through to your solar charge controller your ep ever solar charge controllers then there's just um, some passives on there an ams 3.3 volt linear regulator and an rs4852 serial adapter and uh, this is designed to take a Wemos D1 Mini. This is a clone that plugs in there. We can program the Wemos over its USB and then connect this up to a solar charge controller. And uh, also there's a nice case for it that Colin has designed as well, which is available um, on a link on his Tindy store. So let's pop that in there now this you have to put in this way i think it's a fairly tight fitting case yeah once it's in clicks into place and then we can pop the wemos in as well and uh, that sits in place so there's the access to the usb and to the rj45 which is definitely in place now i'm not sure that's coming out again very easily but of course there's no need to once it's in and then there's a nice little snap-on case with a very satisfying snap here we are on colin's github and you can see the address above i will also link it down in the description below this video um, you can see all the software here and it loads into the Arduino IDE where you can compile it and upload it to your Wemos D1 Mini. But also Colin has handily supplied a bin file here. So if you're happy to upload that, I use ESP Flasher on my computer to upload straight to the Wemos D1 Mini. Now uh, you can see the board there and you can see that it has been tested on various different hardware for the EP Ever line of uh, solar charge controllers and I've done quite a bit of testing myself. I can confirm it definitely works with the Landstar B range, it definitely works with the Tracer because I've tried it on mine. Um, it also works on the AN series and the Tri-Ron series, not Triton series, Tri-Ron series. Uh, yeah, so I've tested all of those and they all work with it because, like I said, I've been using this for a few months now. Um, recently, there's also an over-the-air update um, edition so that you can update this over the air and you don't have to disconnect it and connect it to your computer which is very nice too now the rs485 to wi-fi adapter is a total solution you don't need any other hardware you just need your solar charge controller the rs485 to wi-fi adapter and i guess a browser to see the information the uh, Wemos D1 Mini interrogates the solar charge controller, it's powered by the solar charge controller, and it holds this web page on the chip itself. So, like I said, an all-in-one solution. This website shows, well, live data, the solar voltage, the solar current, etc., the battery and the load, shows the charging status and the battery state of charge, all that good stuff in one handy page we can also see historical data now this is the historical data held on the solar charge controller it's not stored on the wemos so this is the information that the solar charge controller keeps over weeks and months and years um, with various different stats in it so uh, we can see for example my minimum voltage today on the battery and also the total generated energy again this is my landstar 1024b which is connected to a small 7 amp hour lead acid battery and a 20 watt monocrystalline panel and it's not always connected so uh, yeah it's not generated a great deal just two kilowatt hours 
Over in the settings tab, we can see the more advanced functions of the RS-485 to Wi-Fi adapter, which are totally optional, but may pique your interest. You can save all the stats to an influx DB. So you can save everything to a database. And then of course you can recall that over weeks and months and years and uh, look at trends and that sort of thing. So yeah, influx DB, a time series database is perfect for this sort of stats. So yeah, you can plug it in to an influx DB. You can also connect it to an MQTT broker and uh, put all your information across to MQTT and then of course that allows you to bring it into all sorts of other things including Home Assistant. Now the latest version of this code which is a beta version and not yet publicly released but hopefully it will be Colin very soon. You can also uh, do Home Assistant Discovery so if you're a Home Assistant user you can automatically discover this device and its sensors and bring them into your home assistant and make decisions based on what's going on. If the battery is too low, well, publish a packet which turns off your inverter, that sort of thing. It's all really nice. You've got load control in here and of course you can save all the settings of this device. So yeah, it's really well thought out i would say final tab about that github link again and uh, the mention of a discord server there where you can talk about this device and here i'm using mqtt explorer which shows the topics being published uh, across my mqtt server and if we expand the landstar 1024b and that's a customizable topic we can see for example the battery stats here uh, the current voltage is 14.4 volts because it was in boost mode wasn't it which is probably mentioned here in the status yes it is charge mode boost so as you can see every time this information flashes it's being updated so that's the rs485 to wi-fi adapter for ep ever solar charge controllers by Colin Hickey, link to his Tindy store down below. I think it's a really neat, simple hardware solution with some great advanced software put on that Wemos. I've been using it for a number of months and it's been super reliable. So yeah, it's a really good solution. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.